where are we? Boom, right there in the middle of LNG Central, as they call it, all over Asia. You look at the supplies, how the trading's going. Papua New Guinea's right there. Next. So what we looked at is the whole value chain, from the work and the engineering, from the idea concept, from the field, drilling it, building the pipeline and infrastructure through the marketing and the shipping and making sure that the net back of that stays within the country. It used to be people did flat contracts, arbitrage sovereign countries like Trinidad, and the trading was kept to big multinationals offshore. So that lesson's been learned and provides value for us as Interol as well as the country. Next. A little bit about the project itself. Four million tons is our first train. We're underpinned by the gas supply and the discoveries. We're working on feed right now for the liquids and estimated employment during construction, about 6,700 people. A massive increase would be one of the largest employers in the country, very sustainable. Next. Schematic of how it is between uh, the structure, small offshore pipeline, back to the refinery infrastructure where we can use the synergies and it's billions of dollars of capex looking at a brownfield site versus green, greenfield. Next. Superior quality, we go back to why we have an advantage versus other projects in the world. We have high deliverability and low cost of supply. Our F&D is one of the most competitive within the region. We're rich in condensates and LPGs. That can add 40 to 60% to the baseline value of the commodity on an MMBTU basis. We're low in contaminants, very small in H2S. It's a light, sweet crude area, light, sweet uh, gas, very negligible CO2 versus some of the CO2 fields, offshore, uh, deep water fields that are being exploited in Australia. We're fairly tight on shore. Next. So what we see is in the world today, you get the super majors doing LNG. We call it the bulldozer versus the high quality. They can just throw a lot of capital. There's inefficiencies. If governments have to pay for 22% of a large capex on a project, it can bankrupt a small country. They get arbitrage and they have to sell down their economic interest. Or you work for quality, lower the cost, and there's long-term economic stability and you help as a winning relationship. So as a small company, we have to have a much tighter relationship with the sovereign nation, and it works to both of our advantages. So we look at it and we say eventually they'll have to justify it, maybe they don't, okay? But we'll make our track and go down our path. Next. A site of where we're uh, building our facility. Next. So I know we're short on time, so in summary, Papua New Guinea was undiscovered. It's a frontier area. As I said, the area that we work and employ in healthcare, we treated, uh, there's 780 local inhabitants in our area the size of Manhattan. We treated over 800 people last year. Their life expectancy was 35. Now it's 50 in two years. So there is a balance and they need it. So not everybody's as fortunate as those here today. And we look at the hydrocarbon uh, resources, it's there to, uh, to drive a major project and have a real impact on a small country. We're self-sufficient right now with the local refinery. We've done a lot of uh, technology, have the first uh, local uh, refinery operators that everyone that we spoke to said they could never learn and never operate a complex plant, and they're running it today. So we shifted our expats out, went through training, it took five years. Well, they're there and they're running that facility. The refinery has improved the environmental impact of our fuels throughout the country. In our fuels, it's a 98% reduction, while others that can easily afford it, irrespective on price, just for principle, for a million dollars, will continue to have negative impacts uh, versus fuel standards. And even if the government passes a regulation, they try to ignore it, so it's unique and that still happens today. So, but we're looking to continue the LNG initiative. We think it's clean energy supply. It provides price risk protection 
for the economy for that area and can drive the economy and their independence and future prosperity on a nation that was once forgotten. And with that, thank you.